All right, we're talking about the biggest retirement savings mistake you could be making. And according to a recent survey, you could be making this mistake. Are you saving enough for retirement? That's really the question. Are you saving enough for retirement? And if you are or if you aren't, you might fall into this survey. According to a new survey by Morgan Stanley, 62% of individuals have either lowered or have stopped making their retirement savings contributions. Why is that? Why are they stopping their retirement savings contributions? Maybe it's the economy. Maybe high inflation. Maybe it costs more for you to go to the grocery store to fill up your gas tank. Maybe it costs more to put your kids in school, to buy their sports equipment. Maybe inflation has you worried about your retirement. And so because of that, you have stopped contributing to your retirement accounts. 62% of respondents in a Morgan Stanley survey have stopped or lowered their contributions to their retirement savings accounts. Out of that 62%, 31% have stopped or lowered their 401k contributions. 31%. This is the biggest retirement stake mistake you can make. And you want to make sure that you are not doing this no matter what is going on. Inflation, is that causing you to stop making your retirement savings contributions? Is it the economy in general? Are you worried about the economy moving into a recession? Are you worried about your job? Maybe you're going to need that cash. Maybe that's why you're not saving enough for retirement. Maybe that's why you've stopped or lowered your retirement savings contribution. 62% of individuals in a recent Morgan Stanley survey have stopped or lowered their 401k contributions. 31% have stopped contributing or saving in their 401k. Inflation, the economy, the stock market. A lot of individuals that I talk with don't want to invest in their 401k. They don't want to invest in their Roth IRA or their IRA or their taxable brokerage account because they believe the stock market is unstable. Friends, let me tell you this. When the market is low, this is a great time for you to continue investing in your retirement savings accounts. The biggest mistake that you can make when you're doing retirement savings is to stop or to lower your retirement savings contributions because of external factors, external like inflation, like the economy, like the stock market. Now, keep in mind, I have empathy. Understand if, if something's going on in your world, you lose your job, or a child is sick, or you have a healthcare situation, or there's a hurricane. We just experienced Hurricane Ian, and you need your funds to live off day to day. Totally understand. But don't let fear of the unknown keep you from investing in your retirement savings accounts. Again, 62% of respondents in a recent Morgan Stanley survey say they have lowered or stopped their retirement savings contributions because of economic factors. 31% have lowered or stopped their 401k contributions. This is a huge mistake. This is something you don't want to do. Let's take a little history lesson. Let's think about what has gone on the last 50 years. So today is 2022. Let's go back 50 years. Let's go back to 19, what would that be? 70, 30, 70. What's happened the last 50 years? We've had oil embargoes. We've had high inflation. We've had presidents uh, attempted assassinations, Reagan. We've had uh, 9-11, we've had wars, rumors of wars, we've had a pandemic, we've had all kinds of financial and economic hardships. We've had Lehman Brothers go belly up. We've had countries like Greece almost leave, like they had to like leave the euro. This is not a time to stop contributing to your retirement savings accounts and your 401k. Why? 
what did the market do the last 50 years? If you look back at the S&P 500, which is the stock market, it's the 500, it's the index of the largest 500 companies based on market capitalization in the world, the stock market has averaged 10% since 1950, 8% with inflation. So if the market is down 20% today, odds are that a year, two, and three years from now, the market will be higher. So the biggest mistake that you could be making within your retirement savings is to stop or lower your retirement savings contributions. Again, a recent survey from Morgan Stanley. And this blows, this was in Barron's Magazine. And you can look this up, just Google it. It was in Barron's Magazine last week. 62% of respondents to a Morgan Stanley survey have stopped or lowered their retirement savings contributions because of some external factor. And you want to be looking at ways if you are investing in your 401k, if you're investing in your Roth IRA, if you're making a contribution, this is a time when you want to continue to invest. You want to look for ways that possibly you can increase that investment. I was working with a young lady today on ways that we can increase her contribution based on her budget because she saw that, hey, the market is lower I'm young. I've got a lot of time on my hands. How can I put more money into the stock market? Will the market go lower from here? Yeah. Could it go higher from here? Sure. Two things I know. The market's going to go up and the market's going to go down. But over time, the market will go higher. Now, could this be a three-year span like we saw from 00 to 03? Could be. Could it be a lost decade like 00 to 2010 where the stock market was a negative three for a decade? Could be. But we don't know that. And you won't know until it's over. And so now is not the time to stop contributing. If you would have continued to contribute in, two, in the 2000s and gotten through 2010, you would have made your money hand over fist. So you want to continue to contribute to your Roth IRA, to your IRA, to your 401k, to your 403b, to your TSP. Do not make the biggest retirement savings mistake and stop contributing because of market fluctuations, economic fear, inflation. Now, again, I have sympathy and empathy. If there are situations in your life where you need money because you need to eat, pay the light bill, do that. Don't save for retirement with money that you need to pay the light bill. But if you're just sticking it in the bank, earning zero or in a money market account, or not letting that money go from your paycheck to your 401k and you're just spending it, you're losing because a dollar today will not be worth a dollar tomorrow because of inflation. The biggest retirement savings you could be making right now is not contributing and continuing to tr contribute to your retirement savings accounts. And let me show you the power of continuing to contribute to your retirement savings. Let's use a really easy example. And let me show you why compound interest and continuing to invest is your friend. I always say that God's greatest gift outside of Jesus is compound interest. So let me show you this. Let's look at a really easy example. So if you're saving for retirement, the rule of thumb is you want to save at least 15% of your gross income for retirement. Okay, so 15% off the top goes to retirement. So let's say that you are 30 years old. Okay, let's say you're 30 years old and you're going to invest until you're 60. If you have 50,000 saved today and you invest 15%, of your salary. And let's say that your salary is also $50,000. That's the average salary in America today for a 30 year old. So 50,000. So 15% of that would be 7,500 bucks. And let's say you're able to earn 6% a year for 30 years. So you're putting in 15% of 50,000. You've got $50,000 saved. You're putting in $7,500. You're going to earn 6% a year. What's that look like after 30 years? That looks like 
and eighty thousand dollars. Look at that, eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars just by continuing to contribute seventy five hundred dollars every year, not having any pay increases, not having any bonuses, not having any you know matching contributions or ESOPs or anything, just contributing fifteen percent of your gross income. Now, at 60, will you have enough money to retire? I don't know. You've got other outside investments. But the biggest retirement stake, the mistake that you could be making is stopping this contribution. Remember, a survey, a recent survey by Morgan Stanley said that 62% of individuals are stopping or lowering their retirement savings contribution. Well, let's look at lowering it. So we've got $880,000 putting in 15% of $50,000 for 30 years. What if we only put in, let me go to, let's say 50K. That's what we're starting with, 6%. And let's say we put in 10% of our salary. That's $5,000. So 10% of our salary is $5,000. Same 30-year period, how much money would we have? $682,000. Almost an exact $200,000 difference and we lowered our contribution. That's why it's so important to continue to invest 15 to 20% of your annual income, your gross income, that's before taxes, into your retirement savings account. Do not make the mistake that 62% of respondents from this survey are making by stopping or lowering their contributions. Now, I went even farther in a video and I did 5%. And if you invest 5% of your gross income for 30 years using the same strategy, so 6%, you would have $484,000. Now, I'm using 6% as our rate of return. Remember, the stock market's averaged 10% since 1950. It's averaged 8% with inflation. So if we average 8% or 9% or 10% over a 30-year period, just buying an S&P 500 indexed fund, passive index S&P 500 fund over the next 30 years. You're going to have a lot more money, but you're not going to do it if you make the mistake of not continuing to contribute. Remember a recent survey, and I keep saying it because I re when I read this, I thought, oh my gosh, I have to share this because this is the biggest retirement mistake you could be making. 62% of individuals are stopping or lowering their retirement savings contribution. So what do you do? What do you do if you find yourself in that 62%? Well, the first thing I would say you need to do is you want to create a budget. And I know that's a dirty word. I know that's a Dave Ramsey word. And sometimes it's a cuss word. But you want to create a budget. My wife and I literally just tweaked our budget because we had some added expenses come in that we were unaware of. And so we had to tweak our budget. And so we knew, hey, adding this expense in, this is where that money is going to come from, and this is what's going on. You want to have a budget. So when you have a budget, you can look back and say, okay, I can continue contributing. Maybe my grocery bill has gone up. Maybe the cost for kids' care has gone up. Maybe our gas has gone up. But here's some areas in our world that we can trim so we can continue to invest for retirement. I always like to tell my clients, don't think about yourself. I'm 36 years old. I'll be 37 in December. Don't think of yourself as a 36-year-old. Don't think about your investing world as a 36-year-old. Think about your investing self as a 66-year-old. What 66-year-old Drew going to say to 36-year-old Drew? He's going to say, don't give up. Keep investing. Don't let fear, economic fear, inflationary fear, recession fear, world war fear. Don't let that stop you from continuing to contribute to your 401ks, your IRAs, your Roth IRAs. The biggest mistake that you could be making in retirement and in your, in your retirement savings is to stop contributing. 31% of the 62% from the Morgan Stanley survey said they have lowered or stopped their 401k contribution. And we don't want to do this because what do most 401ks have? Most 401ks have a match. They have a match. And if you have a 3% match on your 401k, you are leaving free money on the table. And you don't want to do that. So if all you can do is 3%, put in 3%, get the match. 
And if you don't get a match in your 401k and your income allows it, put in money into a Roth IRA or put it into a Roth 401k. If you want to put more than the minimum that a Roth IRA or more than the maximum that a Roth IRA allows you to do. The biggest retirement savings mistake you can be making is to stop your contribution. We do not want to do this. Think about how much do you need to have saved for retirement? I do videos all the time. Can I retire at 55 with this? Can I retire at 58 with this? If you're going to retire early, that's what I get calls all the time. Now I want to do early retirement. Retire If you want to do that, you have to continue to save. You have to continue to invest. You have to continue to contribute and live today, right? What's the old saying? Live today like no one else so that tomorrow you can live like no one else. Don't let fear stop you from contributing to your retirement savings account. Let me tell you something. The worst, the, the worst people to listen to, CNBC, Fox Business, Fox News, CNN, some of the YouTube talking heads, I guess I would be included in that. They want to pump you full of fear. The market's crashing. The world's ending. Nuclear war, recession, inflation. Let me tell you something. I'm a history guy. Love history. I've, you, we want to talk history. We'll talk. Every time period, every generation has gone through fear, has gone through economic uncertainties, has gone through the risk of a market collapse. Some, like my grandfather, went through the Great Depression. They understand economic uncertainty. There no jobs, right? Don't let fear keep you from contributing, contributing to your retirement savings accounts. The biggest retirement savings mistake you could be making, 62% of respondents from a Morgan Stanley survey said they stopped their retirement savings contributions. And 31% lowered, lowered or stopped their 401k contribution. So what can you do? We talked about budget. What's the second thing you can do? How much are you investing for retirement? Listen, 10 to 15% is your starting point. That's how much you want to be investing. 10 to 15% of your gross income is what you want to be saving for retirement. Once you've done that and you feel comfortable, you've got your emergency fund established, you know that if some kind of something happens, you can pull money out of a bank or a money market, then look for ways to increase your savings. So 10 to 15% is what you want to start with, gross income, saving for retirement. If you can do more than that, if you can do 20, 25% of your gross income saving for retirement, that's, that's only going to be better for you. That's only going to benefit you more. And I talk about this a lot on this channel. If you're saving 10 to 15%, if you have a 401k at work, make sure you're putting money into your 401k so you're getting the match. At least get your match. After you've contributed to your 401k, look for other ways to be more tax efficient, okay? Now, if you have a Roth 401k at work and it works for your taxes, contribute to your Roth 401k. Now, the company's match is always going to go on the traditional side, which means the pre-tax side. So you'll have two sides to your 401k. But after you've contributed to your 401k, if you have money left over, look for investing if you don't need the tax write-off. Look for ways to invest tax efficiently. A Roth IRA, if your income allows it, or my favorite way of investing outside of a Roth IRA would be what we call a taxable brokerage account. Just a regular account set up in your name, okay? A taxable brokerage account gives you the ability to pull money out whenever you want. So if you're one of those people saying, hey, can I retire at 55? Can I retire at 57? Can I retire at 53? If all your money's in 401k, the answer is going to be no, unless you're using the rule of 55 or you're going to use an IRA and a 72T. Listen, we'll use those rules when we're planning out retirement income for clients. But if we had a taxable brokerage, if we had a bucket of money that I call it a freedom bucket of money, the freedom to do whatever you want. Nobody can take it away. Nobody can tell you when to take it out. Nobody can tell you you got to take an RMD on it. If you had a freedom bucket of money that you've been building up, outside of your 401ks, outside of your IRAs, outside of your Roth IRAs, that you can use as a bridge for retirement income between ages 55 and 65 or between ages 58 and 67, whenever. That is going to benefit you so much in retirement. And when you look at this survey, 
This Morgan Stanley survey that says 62% of respondents stopped or lowered their retirement savings contributions. They're not talking about taxable brokerage accounts. They're talking about IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, 403bs. But I'm encouraging you to have a taxable brokerage account and use that like retirement savings, to think of that as retirement. Let me tell you how, I'll just tell you how I've got mine set up. I have, because I'm self-employed, I have a SEP IRA. So I invest in my SEP IRA and I also invest in my taxable brokerage account. Those are the two accounts that I use. Um, it's a joint account between me and my wife and we have a SEP account. The SEP account helps me to write off some income and the taxable brokerage account allows me to put money into a, a brokerage account that I can, again, we can pull out at any time we want. We can invest in anything we want. We can do whatever we want with that account. It has flexibility and freedom. Now, obviously, there's some other things that we've built into there. I do do Roth conversions because I, I do believe in that. I think that's very imperative. There's a lot that goes into this. But when I read this article from Barron's, look it up. It's on just Google, Barron's Morgan Stanley survey. You'll see 62% of respondents have lowered or stopped their retirement savings contributions. 31% have lowered or stopped their 401k contribution. That's the biggest retirement stake you can make is stopping or lowering your contribution. Why? Because you look at your 401k and you go, oh my gosh, I'm down 20%. I lost $50,000. Keep investing. It's a great time. Fast Eddie says the market's on sale. Fast Eddie's right. The market is on sale. The market is on sale. Think about if you go to your favorite store. My wife goes to Target. I'm, I'm a husband of Target. I don't know if you've seen that with uh, Charlie Bean and Doodad. I'm a husband of Target. My wife's a Target fanatic. She goes in there. Something's on sale. She's probably coming out with it. The market's on sale right now. Companies are on sale. They could get cheaper. The S&P 500 is on sale. If you're contributing to your 401k, make sure, depending on where you're at in the age bracket, that you're contributing for the best opportunity for you. If you're in your 30s, you're in your 40s. I, I met with a couple yesterday. They're in their early 30s. And they're doing a wonderful job saving. They've got 401k set up. They've got emergency funds, 529s. They're doing a great job. They had me in, they wanted me to look at their investments and everything they had was in the exact same target date fund. And again, I'm not nothing wrong with target date funds, but I pulled it up for them and I said, look, here's what's actually inside this target date fund. And I said, is this, we looked at it and I think it was like 55% was total stock market. It was the Vanguard to target total 50. 55% was the total stock market. 38% I think was the international and then the bond. And I said, how have the international markets performed lately? And they're like, not very good. I said, listen, I've been doing this 15 years. The international markets have done nothing for 15 years. Again, not saying they're not going to do better. But if it was me and it's my money, because this is what I'm doing with my money, is why don't we just put this in the Vanguard S&P 500? Why don't we just do that? Because you're young. Just contribute there. And so you don't want to stop contributing and you want to continue to invest for your Hey, so what can you do? You can continue to invest. The market's on sale. The market is on sale. Look at it on a weekly basis. If you're contributing to your 401k, make sure the funds that you're in are going in the right place. If you're investing in a taxable brokerage account and you're putting in money on a weekly, a monthly, a semi-annual, an annual basis, whatever. So I put in money on a weekly basis. I'm really kind of weird about that. That's just how I do it. And so it goes into our joint account. I say, okay, where's the S&P 500 today? Where's the NASDAQ? Where are we at? Let's buy it. Let's buy these levels. And I've loved, you know, obviously this year has been a tough year from an investing standpoint. But if you're young, this is a great time to be buying. Todd Hallam says, I'm loading up on solid dividend stocks, growth stocks, and ETFs. Great strategy, Todd, for you uh, to make sure that, you know, you want to have, like it says, solid dividend growth stocks and ETFs. Good, good strategy. So the biggest mistake that you could be making in retirement is stopping or lowering your contribution. 62% of respondents are doing that. So what can you do? You get a budget. You invest 10 to 15% of your gross income into your retirement savings. Make sure you're getting the match. Make sure you are doing the things today that are going to get you to retirement in the future. Some of the other things that I always talk to people about, uh, there was a survey a couple of Months ago, it said 70% of recent retirees and 
uh, like early retirees, people who have been retired for one to five years, 70% of them wish they had saved more sooner. 70%. So if you're over the age of 50, okay, and you're thinking about retiring soon, you have the ability to do what they call a catch-up contribution. And what a catch-up contribution allows you to do is to put more money into your 401k or into your IRA and your 403b as well. So if you're under the age of 50, you can put in a certain amount into your 401k or into your IRA. Based on the year that you watch this video, those levels are going to change. But if you're over the age of 50, you're allowed an extra amount into those two investment vehicles. So in an IRA for the year 2022, you can put an extra $1,000 into your IRA or Roth IRA if you're over the age of 50. So if you're 49 today and you're going to be 50 tomorrow and you have extra cash, be looking at saying, hey, can I put more catch up contribution in? Think about it. Think about over time. Let's just say that you put an extra thousand dollars in for 10 years. OK, let's say the catch up contribution never changes over a 10 year period. You're 50. You're going to retire at 60. You're going to put an extra thousand dollars into your uh, retirement account. Just over 10 years. So we're going to put $1,000 extra in. I don't know if you can see that. $1,000. And let's just say we earn uh, 8% on that money for 10 years. So we're going to do this for 10 years. Whoop, 10 years. That's $16,645 extra dollars with the catch-up contribution. So you put in, what's that? $1,000 a year for 10 years. So that's one, two, three, ten thousand. $10,000 but you got 16,645. So you want to be cognizant of where you're at in your retirement journey. And that works if you're under 52. You got an extra thousand dollars, throw it into a taxable brokerage account. Take that thousand dollars that I did right there, do that over time, over 20 years, over 30 years. Think about the extra money that you can be saving today. 70% of surveyed retirees wish they had saved more sooner. And 62% of respondents in a Morgan Stanley survey said they stopped or lowered their contribution. So you've got like the people that are already retired saying, I wish I would have saved more now. I wish I would have saved more sooner. I need more money now. And then you got people today are going like, like I ain't going to save because you got the economy's tough. Uh, it's Biden. It's Trump. It's, you know, inflation. It's whatever. Now, listen, again, if you're, if you're having trouble living day to day, and that retirement contribution, you need that to live, do that. But if you don't need that money to live day to day, the biggest mistake you could be making is stopping. The worst show on TV for you to watch is halftime on CNBC. Do not watch that show I'm telling you to get out, get in, get out, get in. No, just buy steady, passive ETFs, good quality stocks, build a portfolio around that. If you need help with that, call me. And you're going to be just fine. Don't let fear stop you from saving for retirement. Because the biggest mistake you could make in retirement is to stop contributing. Okay? Now, save more money. Now, catch-up contributions. Great way to do that. Another thing you want to think about. When, you're, when you are um, saving for retirement. Okay? So, we know we're going to not do the biggest mistake which is to not save. So then what are we going to do? Well, one of the things you're going to do is we're going to continue to contribute and invest. And the way we're going to do that is through 10 to 15% of our contribution is going to go into our retirement savings, whether that's in a 401k, a brokerage account, a Roth IRA, whatever. If we're over the age of 50, we're going to think about doing catch-up contributions. But another thing to think about is you want to think about taxes. Taxes are huge, especially when you're saving for retirement. Because you might be thinking, I'm just going to put this money into an IRA. I'm just going to put this into the traditional 401k side. Again, think of yourself as 36-year-old or 46-year-old. That's you today. What 65-year-old are you going to say? Hey, man, I wish you'd put a lot more money in that Roth IRA because national debt's still gone up. Taxes are higher now. We need tax-free income. So you want to be thinking when you're saving for retirement, think about taxes, 48% of respondents in a survey so they didn't know, didn't understand how taxes would impact their retirement. And 40% actually said they're paying more taxes now than they expected. Now, that's not more than they paid when they worked, just more than they expected to pay in retirement. You, you know, you think about it, you still have taxes on your IRA. Uh, that's called ordinary income. 
when you get over the age of 72, you have to take out an RMD. So that's taxed. And then you have IRMA taxes, which is the, what it costs your Medicare, what's your Medicare premium costs. If you make over a certain amount of income, they, they raise your Medicare part B that that's essentially a tax, right? It's not necessarily coming out of, you're not paying it to the government. It's coming out of your social security. So there's all these taxes you want to be thinking about. So when you're saving for retirement, when you are not making the biggest retirement mistake, which is stopping your contribution, you're actually going to continue to do it. You need to think about taxes. And you also want to think about inflation. Inflation's huge, right? We're dealing with it right now. We just put a seven spot on the board last year. Probably going to put an eight, nine spot on the board this year. Uh, inflation's out there. And you want to think about inflation when it comes to your retirement. Do you, want, do you know what the best way the, one of the best ways to beat inflation is through the stock market. The stock market is one of the best ways to beat inflation. And so if you're worried about inflation and you're stopping your retirement contribution because you're worried about inflation, you're doing the exact opposite of what you want to be doing. The stock market, good, solid companies with good, solid cash flows, paying nice dividends, continuing to invest in the economy, doing research and development, Buying companies, Elon Musk, buying Twitter, things like that. That is going to be the best way to beat inflation and contributing into that, into that retirement savings. Reti saving for retirement into that environment is the best way you're going to beat inflation. Do not be like the 62% from the Morgan Stanley survey that said they are stopping or lowering their retirement savings contribution. 31% are stopping their 401k contribution. Don't do that. Okay, listen, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Love, love, love doing these live streams. So we know we're not going to do the biggest retirement mistake, which is we're not going to stop our contribution. We're going to continue to invest. We're going to put 15 to 20% of our gross income into our retirement savings. We're going to think about taxes. We're going to factor in inflation. What else do we need to think about? What do you need to think about? If you're going into retirement or you're thinking or you're doing retirement planning. Well, if you're in your late 40s, you want to be thinking about Social Security. Social Security is something you definitely want to be thinking about. When to claim 62, 67, 70. I've got tons of videos on the channel about claiming Social Security. How long are you going to wait? How old's your spouse? What's your benefit going to be? What's what's their benefit going to be? How's that going to be? Check out Social Security, especially if you are late 40s and early 50s. You can go to ssa.gov and get your Social Security statement. Another thing you want to be thinking about is how are you going to invest? What's your strategy for retirement investing? The biggest mistake you can make is to stop or lower your retirement savings contribution, which 62% of respondents in a Morgan Stanley survey are doing. We're not going to do that, right? Your financial EKG channel. We're not doing that. But now that you're putting money into the market, what is your retirement investment strategy? How are you going to invest now to retirement? If you're younger, are you taking the appropriate amount of risk? If you're older, are you taking the appropriate amount of risk? Right? So my dad's 69 years old. He's probably not investing like me. He definitely should not be investing like me. I'm 36. I've got 30, maybe even more years, man, with this national debt and taxes and inflation. I might have to work the rest of my life. That's okay, though. I love what I do. But how are you investing for retirement? You're going to put the money in. How are you investing? If you're younger, if you're my friend Kevin, who comments on the channel a lot, if you're younger, you want to be investing in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow, solid growth. ETFs or mutual funds. And I prefer passive ones. And I, I'm not ashamed to say that. I prefer passive index funds over active management. Active management might win in one year, might win over a time frame, but passive, just following the market, buying the S&P 500 will always win. So if you're going to continue to contribute, continue to invest, you're going to be the, the you're going to be the, what is that? 48%, 62%. <laughs> if you're going to be, actually it's 38, if you're going to be the 38% that's going to continue to invest in the market, not the 62% that's stopping or lowering their 401k contribution, if you're going to be the 38% that's going to continue to invest, if you're younger, understand where you're at. Be passively indexed. Why? 
fees and the most amount of growth. If you're older, if you're in your 50s and you're thinking about retiring at 55, retiring at 58, then it becomes a little bit more delicate. Then you've got to have a little bit more of a diversified uh, approach. You want to talk about risk. We want to talk about where your income's coming from. Maybe we have some, some changes there. But if you're young, 30s, 40s, let's go. Let's go. Hit those home runs. Be Aaron Judge. 62 home runs. Be the home run king. No asterisk next to that at this point. So the biggest mistake you could be make be making in retirement right now, 62% of respondents from a Morgan Stanley survey have lowered or stopped their retirement savings contributions. 31% have lowered or stopped their 401k contributions. It's a huge mistake. If you need the money, I get it. But if you don't need the money, don't let fear keep you from contributing. Let me show you this. Let me show you what I just, I did this earlier. This is, hold on. Here we go. All right. So this is an example of compound interest. So let's say we have a 30 year old and he's going to retire at 60 or he's at least going to invest for 30 years. He's got $50,000 saved for retirement. Okay. Now the average salary for a 50 year old right now is $50,000 a year. So let's say for the next 30 years, from age 30 to age 60, he only makes $50,000 a year. So he saved 50,000 and he's only gonna make 50,000. And let's say he contributes 15% of his $50,000 for 30 years. And over here, he's gonna do 10% of his $50,000. He's only going to earn 6% in the market, which I think is low for someone who's 30, going to be 60. I think you can earn 8 and 9%, maybe not 12% like Dave Ramsey says, but I think you can make 8 and 9. That's historical. That's what historical. Listen, if you get 10, 11, 12, boop, we'll high five and we'll chest bump, I guess elbow bump, depending on what you think. Um, but listen, 30 years old, you put in $7,500 a year, every year for 30 years, you make 6%, you get no salary increases, no matches, no ESOPs, no bonuses. You'll have eight hundred eighty thousand dollars at the end of thirty years. Compound interest, compound interest, five thousand. That's ten percent. You'd have six hundred eighty-two. That's a two hundred thousand dollar difference, putting in an extra twenty-five hundred dollars or a less twenty-five hundred, depending on how you look at that. So this is huge. Compound interest, and think about it over time. You might not get another opportunity to invest in the market twenty-two percent down. Now. Over the next 30 years, odds are we'll have five more recessions. That's just historical odds. So you might you might get another opportunity to invest in the market 20% down. Or you might not, right? Timothy asked this question. What's the downside of creating a 30 stock portfolio and living off the dividends, paying thus paying no fees and getting annual dividend increases? Tim, can I call you Tim? I would say there's no downside. I think anytime you put a portfolio together of individual stocks, the only downside is there's individual stock risk, right? There's individual stock risk, um, performance risk on the money. Now, the dividend will stay the same, you know, obviously, or not the dividend, I'm sorry. As long as the dividend stays the same and you own the amount of shares that you originally own, then you'll get the dividend. But there is risk when you only have 30 dividend stocks on the value of your portfolio. But I would say, listen, if you're actively managing it and you're watching it and you feel comfortable with that, um, there's not a whole lot of risk outside of individual stock risk. I'm a big believer, especially when you're investing for retirement. Um, I think that, so for me, I'll just, Timothy, I'll just try to tell you what I've got. So I have, let's just use VOO as an example. I have an S&P 500 ETF. That's where the majority of my retirement dollars go to. OK, and then I build some stocks around that that I like. Um, you know, we own Walmart. I shop at Walmart a lot. I got three kids. Diapers um, are expensive. So we, we, we have we have Walmart stock. I, I just I always say buy what you know. Right. My very first investment as a kid was Domino's pizza because I knew it. I knew Domino's pizza. I ate Domino's pizza. So I invested in Domino's. So I would say the best thing to do for me now, once you get into retirement, Tim, and you're living off of your retirement investments, then it becomes a whole different scenario because now we need to not just build out our dividend. Remember, I always like what uh, Dave Ramsey says, that passive income is really not passive. Everybody wants passive income. Go on YouTube, type in passive. You're going to live off these dividends for the rest of your life. Well, 2020, dividends were suspended. 
Um, there are stocks that pay great dividends, but lose a whole lot of money. And so in retirement, you might need more than just the dividends to live on. You might have a healthcare emergency. You might have something where you need to get out of that money. And so if you take a chunk out of that, that's going to lower your annual dividend. So again, it's about having a whole plan. Does having 30 individual stocks, is there, is there a risk of that? Not necessarily, just as long as it's good stocks. But I would say I'd want to have more of a plan built around my retirement income that's complemented, obviously, by those dividend stocks. Okay, so biggest mistake. We've got about five more minutes on this. So if you have a question, make sure you put it in the comments. The biggest. Now, I want you guys to make a promise to me that you are not going to stop contributing to your retirement savings accounts, your 401ks, your IRAs, your Roth IRAs. Do not Stop. 62% of respondents in a Morgan Stanley survey said that they are going to stop or they have already lowered their retirement savings contributions. 31% said they've already lowered their 401k or stopped it. This is a huge mistake. Obviously, if you need the money, that's okay. But if you don't need the money, don't let the fear of what people say on TV. You can't see. I have a TV over here with CNBC on it. What people say on TV... Don't let that fear stop you from saving for retirement. Because I'll tell you this, there's a lot of talking heads on TV doing the exact opposite of what they're saying on TV, right? And you know this, Todd promised you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for promising that you will not stop contributing to your IRAs, your 401ks, and your retirement accounts. Got about four minutes. If you have any questions, put those in the comment section below. Um, Let's see. When you buy, here's a good question. When you buy a good ETF and it goes down, buy more. Great. That's great. That's a great way to look at it. Think about it in the sense of, you know, I again, if you look at VOO, which is the Vanguard S and P 500. I mean, it, you could use Fidelity. You could use Charles Schwab. I, 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 I shares. I don't care. I'm just using Vanguard because it's easy. It's top of memory. If it's trading at, I don't even know what it's trading at today. Does anybody know what's trading at today? VOO. Let's take a look at it real quick. $329.67. That's what we're trading at today. So let's look at this real quick. Let's have some fun. Let's see. Share my screen. Let's see this one here. All right. Here we go. So this is the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. So Kevin says when the when you buy a good ETF and it goes down, buy more. So this is the Vanguard S&P. Let me see if I can drag this to this other screen so I can look at it. Here we go. Okay, so look at this. Today, October 12th, it's at 329.39. Five days ago, it was at three, what was it? 345.78. A month ago, 377.86. Six months ago, 409.02. And year to date, whoo, year to date, look at that, 439.07, all the way down to 329. What is that? How much have we lost there? That's a lot. 24.9%. Uh, Thank you, Google. That's easy math for me. Now, here's the thing. You want to be buying in all these ridges. You want to buy here. You want to buy here. You want to buy here. Because look at this. You don't know June 16th. We're, they always talk about testing the June, six, the June lows. 337 is what it was trading. Well, if you'd have bought there, you made money coming up here. Now we have surpassed the June low. We're below the June low now. But you want to be buying because here's what you look at. Look at a five-year chart. Look at a max chart. Because you could have told me here, this area right here, this is like the Greek crisis, okay? Like the world's ending. The euro is going to break up. It's all going downhill from here. <laughs> Look at all this pandemic. We don't know what we're going to do. So, I mean, I, I realize that we, that history doesn't repeat. History rhymes, right? But you don't want to be like the 62% of respondents that are making the biggest mistake when it comes to their retirement savings. And that's not contributing or stopping. You want to always be contributing because when we pull up a chart like this 10 years from now, it's going to look like this. Now, I realize that there's people out there saying that we're going to have a, you know, it's going to be a depression. It's going to be worse than we've ever seen. I think 
Kawasaki, is that his name? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You know, he's out there beating the drum on things. I don't know. But what I can say is if you look at the stock market since 1850, we're higher today than we were back then. When we went through the Great Depression, yeah, it took like 14 years to get out of that. And that was tough. But listen, you want to continue contributing, contribute to invest. I can't tell you what tomorrow's going to hold. But what I can tell you is that if you continue to save for retirement, you continue to contribute, you be the 38%, not the 62% that's going to stop contributing to their retirement savings. You're going to be the 38% that's going to continue. You will be rewarded when you come to retirement because you don't know. I'm over my time, but I'm, I'm into this now. You don't know when the market's going to turn. Over the last 10 years, the market's up like 850%. I think it's actually more than that. It's like 900% in overnight trading, meaning after the hours of 4 p.m. all the way back around to 9.30 a.m. Not 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., but from 4 p.m. to 9.30 a.m., the stock market in overnight trading is up 900%. Between the hours of 9.30 and 4, it's actually negative 9. And it's more than that now with where the market's at today. What's that tell you? That tells you you can't time the market. It's about time in the market, not timing in the market. It's about continuing to invest because you don't know what the market's going to do tomorrow. I don't know what it's going to do. I mean, we have good ideas of what it's going to do. We have thoughts, but all those can get thrown out of the window. Putin blows up a Nordic gas line in some, you know, throws everything off, right? And so we want to continue to invest. Because over time, the market is going to be the best way to make Now, I, I get it that real estate is a great place to make money. I agree that growing a business and maybe selling that's a great way to make money. There's other ways to make money. But for everyday people, for those who are working hard, trying to raise good families and just live life, the stock market is the greatest wealth generation tool that the world has ever seen. And it's the best place for you to continue to grow your investments. Okay, so the biggest mistake you can make in retirement is to stop investing. 62% of respondents said they did, according to a recent Morgan Stanley survey. Don't be like them. Be the 38% that continues to invest. Okay, listen, thank you so much for coming to the live stream. Hope you have a great rest of your day. God bless. Bye-bye.